walls, curtain walls. So we're going to be using the wall tool again. So we just click on wall and then we're going to be choosing a wall type. And let's just click on the type selector and scroll down. Notice this here, curtain wall. What I like to explain is that there's industry English, there's English, and then there's Revan English, and they're not always the same things. So a curtain wall in industry is more of kind of a window wall that's attached to the outside face of a slab. It's self-supporting. So a curtain wall has a pretty rigid definition in the industry. But in Revit, they're basically just using this term to indicate a panelized wall. So it's a wall that has multiple panels on it, and they can be glass, but they could be fabric, they could be concrete, they could be other wall types like compound wall, maybe various pieces in it. Okay, so that's how Revit is thinking of a curtain wall. Now, the one specifically that we're going to be using is called Storefront, and that's a predefined style that Autodesk made. It's something that we can use in order to sort of get going and get understanding what curtain walls are all about. Before we really start drawing, let's refer back to our sketch. Okay, so we can see here, it looks like we've got maybe one, two, three different systems. It's kind of hard to see, and it's not really well defined. For now, what we could do is maybe just draw a couple basic ones just to get something in there. We kind of wanted this side of the building to be coat rooms, washrooms, foyer, and then this whole side right here, we wanted it to be the classroom area. And then there's going to be some stairs as well. So we were just going to architecture and then the wall tool, and then we we're just choosing from here, curtain wall storefront right there. Good. So now we're ready to draw. So in this case, we are drawing in 3D. We're just going to give it a shot and see what happens. So let's just zoom in here. Now, finding out what is clockwise is going to be a real challenge here. So we're just going to start and we can edit it after if we want. First of all, where are we drawing from? Well, if we go to level, Let's choose main floor. So just click on main floor. Now, what about the height? Well, the height we could choose up to a level, maybe top of roof plate, but we could also give it an unconnected height. For now, let's just go to the top of roof plate and see what happens. Okay, we'll do one segment here. Now, notice as I highlight the bottom of the wall, see right there, there's sort of a center line that it highlights. And I really don't want to be too specific. I just want to pick two feet out from the edge, but it could vary whatever you want. If you want to be three or one or whatever, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to do one click right there at the bottom center. So click. Now, the trick to this is our next click is still going to be at the bottom of the wall, but we have to be dead center. So you have to see that kind of center line turn blue. You can kind of see that on mine. If I go like this, it's not. If it's like that, it is. So I'll just click there. Okay, so that's our first piece. You can see that the wall automatically embeds itself. Okay, let's just zoom in a little closer and then I'll just pan over. So this has mullions, it has panels, and it has an underlying grid which drives its size. Okay, let's draw another segment here. Maybe just one foot six out from the previous line. We'll just click that. And again, we want to just be kind of right in the dead center until it goes blue. Now, I'm not getting the center on the top of the wall, which is a little concerning, but I'm going to just try it like that. Okay, so it still took it. And then I'm going to hit Escape on the keyboard again. Okay, this time, though, we're going to take the height and we're going to change it to Unconnected. And we're going to choose 12 feet. Okay, and now we'll just hover over there. So I'm just clicking my middle mouse button just to pan and zoom. And if I just hover right there, there. Let's go one foot six from the previous again. Click. You can see it's already lower. And if I just go till about there, you can see that it embedded itself and it left some of the wall up above there. I'm going to hit escape twice. So this wall here, it's still there. It's still intact. That's an exterior wall. But inside of it embedded are other walls. Curtain walls are made up of a bunch of different pieces, so they can be a real challenge to select and edit. If you want to select the whole thing, you got to make sure that your status bar, which is right down here, you want it to say walls, curtain wall, and then whatever the name is. So I'm going to just click that. And then you can do things to this, like you can just stretch the top down visually. You can, in the properties, give it a factor, so negative one foot even. 
Same thing with maybe the length of it. Maybe I want it to be 10 feet. Enter. I like it at 9 foot 6. Enter. You can also, if you're really ambitious, try to get to these little grid lines. And I'm just using the tab key. So I'm hovering and then I just use tab, tab, tab. I'm not pressing it. I'm just cycling through. And then eventually you'll see something called curtain wall grids. So that's down in the status bar again. It'll be right down here when we finally get it. So I'm just tabbing. So I could click on that and we could try moving that. It's pinned for now. So again, I don't really want to get too deep into editing these curtain walls right now. We will do it a little bit more later. Okay, so we've added those in. If we go to our main floor plan, let's just zoom in on the front. Okay, so now we can see there are our curtain walls. So let's just click on one of them. If you just zoom in, you'll see that there's this little flip arrow. That's telling you where the exterior is. So that is the exterior. If it was the other way around, you see how you can just click it and then you can flip which way is actually supposed to be facing out. 